Very often in line balancing studies, uh, lines are balanced more than once in order to compare designs. That's exactly the case that's being suggested here in the industrial food processor scenario. Let's look. An industrial food processor needs to design a product layout for a new product, mint chocolate chip sandwiches. Uh, all right. The company plans to use this new production line, okay, good data reading there, eight hours a day, to meet projected demand of 1,440 cases per day. Okay. The following table describes the tasks involved in the production of mint chocolate chip cookie sandwich. So here's a series of things that need to be done. So we're going to be so we're going to be assigning these tasks to workstations in order to design the line. Okay, fine. Now, oh wait. Actually, we're already into our first question. It says, design the layout using the longest processing time decision rule and then repeat the design using the shortest processing time rule. Okay, before we do that, that's what I meant with, you know, in reality, this is very often done. There is a uh, assembly line that needs to be designed. Uh, several different designs will be generated by swapping out the rules. Now, we were only asked to um, compare two designs. We have to generate those designs first, in essence. Okay, let's see. Well, we cannot design an assembly line without first determining its cycle time. And it doesn't matter which rule we're going to use, we still need the cycle time. Cycle time is operating time divided by demand. Operating time is how long you want to run the line. It said eight hours a day. Divided by demand is the output of the line. In essence, what, how much do you want the line to successfully produce in this time period? I see 1,440 cases. Perfect. Oh, all right, now wait a minute. Okay, so the cycle time of this line needs to be 8 divided by 1,440. Well, I did that, and it comes out to be a very, very small number. Equals point zero zero like five 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 five. Uh, we have to remember that whatever the numerator is in, that's what the answer comes out in. Okay, point zero zero five 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 hours. Remember with cycle time, don't proceed any further until you've adjusted it so that it matches whatever units the duration data is in. How do we adjust it? Well, we see point zero five 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 on our calculator. That is in hours. If you said then times 60, what you would be looking at would be in minutes. And if you said times 60 again, what you would be looking at in seconds. And that's where I come to the conclusion, okay, in order for this line to work, whatever the design looks like, the budget of time at each workstation can only be and should be 20 seconds. All right, now. Time to actually generate these. Now we're being asked to generate two designs. Longest processing time first. If you've got the note frame, there are some worksheets. That's the second part of the question right there. That are included in the note frame. If you haven't, if you don't have the note frame, no problem. But you obviously need to sketch this header because this is the header that describes line balancing. Oh, wait a minute. And either way, whether you have the note frame or they're just working out of the book, the next step really, instead of just like generating the design, we'll do longest processing time first, I would draw a precedence diagram next. Oh, what is that? That's where we actually illustrate this data that we were given. Let's see if I can get some of this on here at the same time. Yeah, kind of. Okay. See this blank space up in here? I'm going to squeeze the precedence diagram in here. I just want to draw a visual, an illustration, in essence, of this table, the precedence relationships. I notice that A does not have any immediate predecessors. Oh, okay. So that means that we could start with task A. Now I just want to illustrate what's being described here. B has A as an immediate predecessor. That means that once you're done with A, you can go on to B. So I'm just sketching that. Both C and D have B as immediate predecessors. So that means that B comes before them. Or once you're done with B, 
you could proceed on to either of those two tasks. And then let's see, E has C and D as immediate predecessors, which means you have to finish both of those before you can start task uh, E. And then F is the last task, you just have to finish E. So, so this is the precedence diagram. This is the shape of the precedence diagram that corresponds to that precedence information. Now see where I, uh, where I sketched it? right next to our worksheet for the actual line balancing problem. That's just really handy. Also really handy, I'm just going to copy the duration data also onto to the diagram because A is going to take 4 seconds. I don't want to have to keep looking it up on this table. B is going to take 14, C is going to take 20, D is going to take 12, E is going to take 6 and F is going to take 8. Okay, now this is a tool I'm all set to go to figure out the design according to longest processing time. Now, if you have the note frame, there's also, just for convenience, another sheet for shortest processing time because we're going to need that too. Now, if you have the note frame, you might want to do what I'm going to do really quick and that's just copy the same diagram over there. If you're working out of like your own notebook, I don't think you necessarily need to do this or worry about this. You could probably make the same precedence diagram work both times you balanced the line. Since we're split across two different pages here, that's the primary reason that I'm just making a really fast copy of the same precedence diagram on the next page. Okay, finally, this was all set up. Finally, we're ready to go to uh, balance this line. Okay, according to longest processing time. Fine, you balance a line, you design a line by beginning at the first workstation and noting that since we haven't assigned any of these tasks, the entire cycle time, that's the number that goes in first, remember the 20 seconds? The entire cycle time is ready and available to be assigned. Eligible tasks, nothing's been assigned, no work has been done on the mint chocolate chip cookie sandwich, which means that A is the only thing that's eligible to be assigned. Okay, well it'll definitely fit and since it's the only one, that's automatic, it gets the assignment. No problem, right, the first station is going to have to do A. Okay, so A has got an assignment. When A is done, now wait a minute, A is 4 seconds. So I need to remember that there's now 16 seconds remaining at this first war station to get work done. B becomes eligible, whatever B is. Eligible tasks that will fit. Let's see, B is 14 seconds. 16 seconds are remaining. That will fit. Great. Automatically gets the assignment. B has been assigned. Um, all right, it's 14 seconds long, so 16 minus 14 means we're down to two seconds at this first workstation to do work. Now that B's been assigned, in essence it's done, C and D become eligible. They're what you'd want to work on next, but C is 20 seconds, D is 12 seconds. None of those are going to fit anywhere near into two seconds. Nobody who is eligible will fit in the time remaining. We are finished with that first workstation. We are finished with the work, first workstation and the moment that you fill a workstation to the point that nothing else that's logical or eligible will fit, you close it down and you open another workstation. Second workstation. We're back to the full time remaining, the full 20 seconds of the cycle time. We have the same set of candidates, C and D, we're trying to find them a home, so to speak, uh, and now they'll both fit. It is only at this point that under eligible tasks that will fit that you've got the choice that your decision rule kicks in. Who am I supposed to pick for the assignment? We said we'd use do longest processing time. This, so I go, hmm, C is 20 seconds, D is 12 seconds. Who's longer? Well, C, fine, C gets the assignment. C gets the assignment and being 20 seconds long the entire cycle time, it uses up all of the time at this workstation which means that was fast. We're done designing the second workstation. We need to add another one. Third workstation, 20 seconds. Now, what did I just do? I assigned C. Who's eligible now for the new workstation? Well, 
D, we're still trying to find a home for it. And you might be thinking, oh yeah, an E, because now you've done C, right? No, 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 E is not eligible. Don't write E right here, okay? This is something, this is an easy mistake to make in line balancing. Don't make this mistake. Be very careful. Let's look at the precedence diagram. Just always be very careful that as you're working your way along a precedence diagram looking for who's eligible next, who's eligible next, if you come across a task that has more than one immediate predecessor, which on the network is going to look like a task with more than one arrow pointing at it, that task doesn't become eligible until everything it's connected to, all its immediate predecessors are crossed off. They're already assigned. In this case, we assign C, okay, consider C done. We can't drop E into the eligible list because D is not crossed off yet. Okay, oh, which means it's only D that's eligible. All right, it'll certainly fit. We have the full time remaining, which means it automatically gets the assignment. Now D is 12 seconds long, so we have eight seconds remaining. Now that D is done, E does become eligible. E will fit because E is only six seconds long. That'll fit into the eight seconds. Okay, great. E gets the assignment. That means we have two seconds again remaining at this workstation. E is done. F becomes eligible, but F is eight seconds, which isn't very long, but it's not going to fit into the two seconds remaining. So we are going to need another workstation. Okay. Fourth workstation. 20 seconds remain. Oh, we're just, there's going to be one last workstation in this design. One last workstation just to do task F. All right. Here is the design according to longest processing time. There's four workstations and then here what is what is assigned to each of the workstations. We want to compare this to, right, what did the question ask? Well, the design you get with shortest processing time. Okay, it's a repeat exercise. Shortest processing time, begin at the first workstation, have 20 seconds remaining, eligible task. It starts out the same as last time. Always you have to do A first anyway, right, in order to cross it off the list. Okay, 16 seconds remaining and then B is going to become eligible and it will fit this like deja vu. We saw this last time and then that knocks it down to two seconds of which C and D are eligible but there's no, they don't fit right. This looks just like last time. The first workstation looks just like last time. Open up the second workstation. 20 seconds remaining. C and D, that's what we're trying to find a place for. Now either C or D will fit. Here we have to choose, and we said we were going to use shortest processing time. Oh, okay, so this means that we will choose the smaller of the two, which means this time D gets the assignment. Okay, D is 12 seconds long, so that knocks time remaining down to 8 seconds. Um, e doesn't become eligible, so the only thing that's left that we're, we need to find a place for is C. C is the 20 second, the really long one. The 22nd one. Okay, not going to fit. Nobody's going to fit. Time for the third workstation. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what rule you're using. That one task C will always need its own private workstation because it is exactly the same length as the cycle time. There's never ever going to be a situation where it will fit in like with some other task. Oh, okay, so this time it's the third workstation that we'll do C and only C. We're still going to need a fourth workstation and maybe more. Let's see. 20 seconds remaining. C's done at this point. E becomes eligible. Okay, great. E is eligible. E will fit. E is assigned. Um, all right. E is only six seconds long. So we have 14 seconds remaining at this last workstation. F becomes eligible, then F will fit. Oh, so E and F will both fit at this last workstation? Okay, so anyway, there's our design for um, the line if you're using shortest processing time. Whew, all right, now we've done all this work. What actually was the question? Let's go back and try to answer it based on this. What are the differences between the two designs? Okay, that one's shortest processing time. That one's longest processing time. 
Do you notice that they have the same number of workstations? That's actually not a difference. I'm going to note that same number of workstations, but different, what is different? Different assignments for second, third, and fourth workstation. And we could even, if we wanted to explain, uh, kind of draw a sketch. Let's see, longest processing time, the first workstation, we assigned A and B, if you want to go back and check our work. But longest processing time, the second workstation we assigned D, and the third workstation we, dis we assigned D and E. So we say, all right, yeah, and then you would do C, then you do D and E. And then there was just F at the last station versus shortest processing time still proposed for workstations. And the first workstation is identical, A and B. But, wait a minute, shortest processing time, we review our work. Shortest processing time gave D its own private workstation here at the second workstation, assigned C to the third workstation, and then grouped E and F at the fourth workstation. Oh, okay, so two different ways to do this. The question asks, which of these two, which of these two is more efficient? I'm looking at that, I can tell you, they're equally efficient. They're equally efficient, I'm going to write that down. You might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Shouldn't you at least calculate the efficiency of each one before you declare that they're equal? I could. I don't have to. I don't have to because I'm remembering the formula for efficiency. The formula for efficiency, when you're talking about a line, the design of a line, right? What is it? It is the sum of the task times, right? Add up all those numbers that are up there, divided by n, the number of workstations, times the cycle time. Well, if you're comparing longest processing time to shortest processing time, you can do this if you want. You can compute this formula for LPT and then for SPT, but you're going to put the same numbers in each time because they both have four workstations. They're both using the same cycle time, they both have four workstations, they're both using the same task data, so it's the same sum of the tasks in the numerator. Ah, so even though they vary in their assignments, these two designs actually happen to be equally efficient. Now, there's one other question that goes along with this scenario. Let's take a look at it. Suppose the food processor decides to implement the design with the longest processing time rule. Oh, okay, well, I've got that back there. We can consult it. You've been hired to manage the production of mint chocolate chip sandwiches, and you have just learned that there are two errors, there may be, okay, maybe two errors in the data originally used during the design process. Okay, that means to say errors in that table. What are the errors? In particular, you discover that both task A and C will probably require three seconds more to complete than originally planned. Which of these two mistakes in duration data is the most troubling to you and why? So what they're saying is you're just now finding out after they design the line that A is probably more like seven seconds long and C is probably more like 23 seconds long, that task. The question is, is of those two, which one of those bothers you more? The answer is definitely C. You say, um, okay, uh, why? Because C was that one task that the length of the task originally was the length of the cycle time? You say, yeah, which means that if it's longer than that, 
it's not 20 seconds it's 23 seconds that right there wrecks the original requirement to produce 1440 cases of mint chocolate chip cookie sandwiches inside of eight hours that if and because I, you know, I did some scratch work here that if the only way to get the longest processing time The only way to get the longest processing time design or any design, see that's the other thing that's bad about um, C. The only way to get any design, let alone this one, to work is you would have to increase the cycle time to 23 seconds. Uh, if you didn't do that, then there would be, the second workstation wouldn't have enough time to do C. So you say, all right, well, fine. We would use that design, and I mean, we'd increase the cycle time to 23 seconds. If you did that, you can check me on this. You said you know, you, it's going to be run for eight hours a day. That's the agreement. You're only going to produce 1,252 cases. You know, you were required to produce 1,440, but you have to increase the cycle time now, which is slowing down the line. Oh, all right. Now, you say that sounds problematic, but I don't see the argument for... C. The fact that its original length of 20 seconds is cycle time. Because it's got to be equally con inconvenient, right, that for instance A is going to be th 3 seconds longer Notice that A, there's two seconds to spare at that station, but that's not enough to cover the fact that, you know, this was the original planning was that A took four seconds. That, if A takes seven seconds, that's going to be disrupted too. Yeah, it'll be disrupted too, but, but C is more bothersome because if the only problem is A, say that, it turns out that the only problem was A. A is seven seconds, not four. You could rebalance the line. You could adjust this. You'd have to change your design, but without changing the cycle time. With A, you could keep the original cycle time. You'd have to rebalance the line, but at least you would make the 1,440 within eight hours. Um, with C, something else has got to give. That makes it more problematic.